Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. It's time to find out if this work is paid off. I say I'm not 100% satisfied with how that turned out. I've learned a little since then, on, since I've been using this, that I should have put a keyway in this boring bar and a tab in this bearing so that they have to spin together. Because of them being similar materials, I'm having a problem with it trying to spin and drag and it gets real stiff. I'll get it where it moves smooth and then it'll bind up and it gets super hard to pull apart and there'll be a burr on it and I can file the burr off and it'll be smooth again and then it'll bind up again. So uh, once I get this job done, I can address that. But for now, I just want to get this done, get it out of here and get paid because this is tying up a fair bit of time and a fair bit of money I got in this deal. So let's uh, get to it. So feels pretty good. Solid. I like it. I think it's going to be the trick. And I can do line boring on blocks and stuff with this too. Uh, should be a pretty good setup. I need to add some more holes to it, features and whatnot, but it's a good place to start. I haven't checked it for run out. I might do that here in a minute. But for now, I need to get this tool adjusted. I'm taking some cuts, and now I need to advance this out and open this bore up some more. I measured I'm at 9.495 and I need to go to 10.232. So that's what we're shooting for. Let's see how close I get. I'm not sure how much this bar will reflect. And it don't look like very much, so it should be pretty close on size, I'm thinking. But it is still a long way sticking out from the center of that bar. And it's gonna be the cutter's gonna be over five inches away from the center line, which is why I got an inch and a quarter. Boring bar stuck in my boring bar in my boring mill. So it's a configuration you don't see very often on boring mills, despite the fact that that's standardly how they were intended to be used. Uh, is with a line boring bar like this with the tailstock. This is perfect application for this. So Hopefully it'll come out perfect. Let me get you in here and uh, maybe you'll be able to see. Probably not. There's not a lot of room here for me to adjust and y'all watch. But So that's my setup for adjusting the bar out. Let's see how close I get to uh, hitting my number. I'll probably uh, try and take it to 9750 in one shot. We'll see if that's a little right the inch depth cut. So should handle that no problem. Oh my brink work. I use my height gauge to uh, sweep the bar and make sure it was parallel with the table. So I did have to adjust the tailstock bearing a little bit so that it was running true. It might not be exactly within a couple of two or three thousandths, but uh, it's less than five anyway, which is plenty good enough to do these holes because the tolerance is 20 according to the book, so.
see what I got advanced to. Okay, Justin Spade is making another pass. cut two more thousandths out bearing was just a little bit too tight but I got to where it would 
tap in there now. So, let's so you got the little grease seal pocket, which that seals to the shaft. And that V seal is supposed to hold the grease in. It says it's important to not use electric grease gun so you don't blow that out. Use a manual grease gun so you got a feel for it. But, it's got the bearing race in, so time to get back to the other side. This is all for that. And I gotta put a plate in here to bush this down so I can put the bearing race on this side because this is supposed to be almost flush. So I'm gonna get a piece of iron and we'll see about getting that done.
There it is, all done up. I think it looks pretty good myself, considering how it started. So, yeah, the seal is in there like that. Mm. Got a step because the bearing comes through the race for clearance, and the race is gonna sit here. And this rubber seal sits here. Best I can surmise, it's supposed to stick out an inch, and that's what I got. So I don't really have a blueprint to go by on this. It's just a lot of figuring, and I don't have the rest of the tractor to go by either. So this is where I'm at. But I guess you can see if the race will go in here. If I got that measured right. Get a wood block and finish that off. Well, there it is. It's done. The sand has been welded on. Didn't turn out the most beautiful. But you can see I got the grease holes coming in there to grease out into the bearing. Side over here at the grease holes. Learning on this is to where they had to be. I got that first one probably a little deeper than I should have. Kind of angled it back on this one. It's the way I'd like to ha have it. So, but it's still behind the seal, so it's plenty safe. It's still going to be greasing into the cavity in between the bearing. See, there was a little wear on this side that didn't totally clean up. But I guess if grease pumps out, they'll know it's greasing. So it's really not that much. It just really just didn't clean the rust off. It's, you can see it's touching most of the way around here. So driver must turn one way most of the time. Must be. I'm not sure. I guess this is the front end. So it must turn to the right mostly. That's probably right. Most people do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little project. This casting that's four feet tall, probably. And quite close to. I don't know. It might, it probably weighs over a thousand pounds. It might be two thousand. You know, it's pretty thick down here in the bottom. That thing's solid. That drawbar part of it, that thing's eight inches by six inches solid. So, just that part of it is pretty heavy. But it's got to hold a 600 horse multiple four wheel drive tractor together. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.